Hello, this is Rukhtan Banerjee again. Uh, we are going to discuss a topic, anterior triangle, and we'll discuss this topic from different per perception. Uh, we'll go in step by step way to dissect the anterior triangle of neck. So, we know the anterior triangle of neck is a region anatomically in the neck. It is present bilaterally. So, from the midline, if we consider, it is lateral to the midline and present in front of the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid muscle and this uh, accommodates quite important structure in the root of the neck. So moving to the first slide, we will be following a PowerPoint presentation. Moving to the first slide, uh, this is anterior as it is very nicely uh, visible, superior, inferior, posterior. This portion, the cursor I am following, this is the position of sternocleidomastoid muscle and this triangle denotes the anterior triangle of neck. Some important landmarks we can appreciate here. It is a suprasternal notch here, cricoid cartilage will be somewhere here. This is a um, uh, laryngeal prominence, the part of the most acute portion of the thyroid cartilage. Here somewhere here it will be the mastoid process, the tip of the mastoid process. So if you remove the skin and a superficial fat, uh, then we can find that this is a skin reflected laterally. Fat, if it is reflected laterally, then uh, we can find the sheet of muscle that is the platysma and superficial layer of deep cervical fascia is present just below that. We can, uh, vis uh, we can see that the parotid gland is visible which is coming in relation to the digastric triangle because centenary triangle largely divided uh, into few more smaller triangles mainly that is here below the mandible digastric triangle posteriorly here it is the carotid triangle below the chin bentum it is the submental triangle and anteriorly here it will be the muscular triangle i'm not going into the detail of the smaller triangle its boundary its contents because everything is documented uh, we are just trying to see what are the structures uh, we can see if we go through dissection or in the examination process maybe in window or ID dissections. So going to the next slide, a bit closer view of platysma, then uh, the skin and uh, fascia is reflected laterally. We can find that uh, in the posterior triangle region spinal axillary nerve is uh, visible. This muscle fibers from the mastoid to diagonal it is going towards the medial end of clavicle and the sternum, manubrium of sternum, manubrium uh, of sternum. So that is uh, the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Coming to the next slide, again this platysma is reflected uh, from the base of the mandible. Then we can see this outline, the cursor I am following, this outline is the sternocleidomastoid, better I should point with uh, this one. This is parotid gland, here it is a ear lobule, somewhere here would be the tip of the mastoid process, clavicle, the median end of clavicle and then the sternum. So the muscle extending here, it is the sternum to the mastoid muscle. So the anterior triangle of neck will be bounded by this base of the mandible, base of the body of the mandible up to the angle of the mandible, then an imaginary line or a projection going from the angle of the mandible to the tip of the mastoid process, then the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid muscle and the median line coming from the mentum, the chin to the suprasternal notch. So this anterior triangle is subdivided by the digastric muscle belly, it would be somewhere here, anterior belly of digastric, posterior belly of digastric to enclose this region which is a digastric triangle or submandibular triangle. Then here we will we'll expect somewhere here is the omohyoid, superior belly of omohyoid. So, posterior superiorly superior belly of omohyoid, posterior inferiorly anterior border of sternocleidomastoid and the median line will uh, enclose this triangle, this region would be the muscular triangle. Then here posterior belly of digastric, superior belly of omohyoid, anterior border of sternocleidomastoid that will enclose the carotid triangle and here anterior belly of digastic muscle here and median line the body of the higher bone that will enclose the submental triangle 
Now, if this superficial fascia is cleared, then we can find that here if we go with the cursor, this is a, a, a quite prominent nerve above the um, lying over the sternocleidomastoid muscle, this is great auricular nerve. Then the uh, coming from the cervical plexus, a few nerves which is going anteriorly uh, over the sternocleidomastoid muscles, this is transverse cervical cutaneous nerves, transverse cervical nerves. Uh, we can find the external jugular vein formed by the posterior auricular vein and the posterior division of uh, retromandibular vein. Then we can find um, this sternocleidomastoid mastoid muscle because we have to uh, we have to appreciate this sternocleidomastoid mastoid muscle because in the further dissection this sternocleidomastoid mastoid muscle will be severed uh, from the, its uh, lower attachment then it will be reflected superiorly so that the inferior structures can be visible or dissected out nicely. Going to the next slide as I told you that the inferior attachment of the sternocleidomastoid muscle is severed, it is cut nicely, then this sternocleidomastoid muscle is reflected so that the structures below the sternocleidomastoid muscle along with the structures overlying this anterior triangle and partly the posterior triangle is visible or dissected nicely. Now we can see the internal jugular vein and uh, somewhere here will be the common carotid artery an internal jugular vein common carotid artery will be ensheathed by a fascial thickening which is a carotid sheet there will be vagus nerve in between and posterior to these structures now what we can see we can see the uh, portion of the hypoglossal nerve which going down which is descending that is termed as descendants hypoglossi which is contributing to the formation of ansa cervical so it will be somewhere here because the carotid sheath uh, is accommodating the ansa cervicalis. Ansa means a loop, a loop of nerve uh, formed by the descendants cervicalis and descendants uh, hypoglossi. Uh, this is forming the ansa cervicalis. Now we can find some submandibular lymph node. We can dissect out here to get the submandibular gland. So moving to this diagram or this picture, what extra information we can get? Um, well, this is the superior belly of omohyad some strap muscles, sternothyroid will be very nicely visible in uh, coming slides. There it is the common carotid artery visible because this portion is dissected nicely now. This is common carotid artery, internal jugular vein, behind and posteriorly it is the vagus nerve visible. Branches of ansa cervicalis is here. It is a very thin uh, or the slender uh, nerve. Uh, during dissection we often damage this nerve but uh, this is visible. Uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle here it is the parotid gland the anterior aspect of the parotid gland coming towards the posterior aspect of the digastric triangle this portion is the anterior portion this is posterior this is superior this is inferior going to the next slide here further clearance has been done uh, this clearing of the fascia and all this has uh, created this nicely visible strap muscles here in triad muscles hyoid bone will be somewhere here uh, laryngeal prominence so these are uh, this is sternothyroid this is sternohyoid there is thyrohyoid muscle this is superior belly of omohyoid the loop of nerve ansa cervicalis is creating a loop here ansa cervicalis here submandibular gland is visible we can find the internal jugular vein um, then common carotid artery just beneath this uh, you can see uh, well, I am not telling uh, the structures of the posterior triangle right now sternocleidomastoid muscle which is reflected here more or less same the scissor is placed almost uh, splitting the carotid sheath here it is we can find the carotid sheath this is this is the common carotid artery here we can find the vagus now this is internal jugular vein uh, the bifurcation of common uh, carotid artery forming the external carotid artery and internal carotid artery uh, will be at the level of the superior border of the thyroid cartilage because of, if we consider vertebral levels the vertebra is not visible here at this point so we have to uh, say that the bifurcation of the common carotid artery occurs at the upper border of the thyroid cartilage so somewhere here it will be the bifurcation we can uh, see it later on we can find the superior belly of omohyad ansa cervicalis is visible okay almost same view 
what else this portion is very nicely clean this is the common carotid artery internal jugular vein parotid gland is visible submandibular gland that's all inferior belly of omohyoid is visible here this is part of the posterior triangle now if we go to the diagram here we can find the submandibular gland here it will be this is the mentum or chin this is anterior this is posterior superior inferior so here it will be the digastric triangle now uh, sternocleidal mus mustard muscle is reflected posteriorly some lymph nodes jugulodigastric lymph nodes may be visible scalene these are the muscles of posterior triangle don't need at this moment going to the next slide here it is a bit larger view sternohyoid muscle sternothyroid muscle superior belly of omohyoid the caesar is uh, pointing towards the carotid sheath carotid sheath is cleaned inferiorly this uh, diagram uh, describes revealing the vagus nerve carotid artery toward the root of the neck now what else we can see we can see the inferior belly of omohyoid here it is the vagus nerve vagus nerve is present in between internal carotid artery and common internal uh, in between the common carotid artery and internal jugular vein and behind it is in between and behind within the carotid sheath carotid sheath is very important for theory also uh, for theory questions also now the strap muscles uh, branches of ansa cervicalis is here it is visible um, submandibular salivary gland and this is another view this view is uh, viewed from below and superiorly so this portion will be the chin the mentum this is the angle of mandible this is auricle somewhere here would be the tip of the mastoid process tip of the mastoid process now we can see that this is the digastric muscle anterior belly of digastric muscle there is a tendon intermediate tendon of the digastric muscle then posterior belly of digastric muscle is visible from here it will be going posteriorly then we can find uh, c3 c4 nerves ventral rami mm, branches of ansa cervicalis is visible here sternocleidal mastoid muscle is reflected here posteriorly bit closer look uh, of this uh, diagram we can find the strap muscle here again uh, ansa cervicalis is very nicely it is a in bit enlarged view very nicely visible this loop of nerve then we can find the tail of the parotid gland here submandibular gland is very nicely visible facial artery we can find posterior to this this portion would be the masseter muscle it would be it would be the masseter muscle and um, going to the diagram here we can find the facial artery now we can see the facial artery is taking a tortuous course there is a tortuosity of the facial artery there is a tortuosity of the facial artery so uh, there is submandibular salivary gland superior belly of omohyoid um, we can find the higher bone here because higher bone will be forming the submental triangle now you see the anterior belly of digastric here uh, Platysma is reflected superiorly from the base of the base of the mandible. Then it would be here the posterior belly of digastric. So this portion will be the digastric triangle or the submandibular triangle. Now you see the facial artery is here. Um, structures of posterior triangle. I am not going to describe this. Ansa cervicalis uh, is visible um, over the carotid artery. Moving to the next slide. now you see the hypoglossal nerve is very nicely dissected here facial artery it is taking a tortuous course then it is going towards the face superiorly this is superior this is anterior this is inferior this is posterior it is taking a loop and then it is tortuously going towards the face here it will be the masseter muscle so if we clinch our teeth palpate the masseter muscle close to the angle of the mandible then gradually sweep our fingers to the anterior aspect of the masseter muscle then at the anterior edge we can nicely palpate the pulsation of facial artery because facial artery is going close to the anterior border of the masseter muscle here we can see this cursor is pointing towards the facial artery 
um, superior thyroid artery is coming from the external carotid artery now here it is the common carotid artery bifurcating into external carotid artery and internal carotid artery this is external carotid artery this is internal carotid artery there is a swelling this portion this swelling is forming the carotid sinus so this level of bifurcation is almost at the level of the upper border of thyroid cartilage it will be upper border of thyroid cartilage now we can see the c1 nerve root here uh, this view again in this side common carotid artery carotid sinus then we can find superior laryngeal artery and internal laryngeal nerve they pass uh, anteriorly they are uh, the the they remain side by side it is quite close in their relationship we can find the stylohyoid muscle here stylohyoid muscle this will be contributing to the posterior border of the digastric triangle um, hypoglossal nerve is visible um, carotid body is uh, there carotid this is the carotid body we can see the carotid body there is from the bifurcation a small bulging is protruding this is the carotid body this is nicely dissected uh, this portion this is the carotid sinus this is external carotid artery this is internal carotid artery internal carotid artery this is internal carotid artery internal carotid artery do not have any branch in the neck internal carotid artery i repeat do not have any branch in the neck it is meant for the structures um, internal to the skull that is the brain and the related structures going to the next slide leaving the strap, strap muscles this is superior belly of homohyoid again we can find the superior laryngeal uh, artery and internal laryngeal nerve submandibular gland just uh, visible here hypoglossal nerve is very nicely visible parotid gland uh, lingual artery is marked here it is this portion small portion the stump is visible this is vagus nerve uh, superior thyroid artery is visible superior thyroid artery theoretically it is uh, said that uh, coming from the anterior aspect of the external carotid artery uh, it's almost a uh, little bit below the level of the greater uh, cornu of the higher bone so, uh, more or less same structure of uh, another view this is the anterior belly of digastric this is quite interesting anterior belly of digastric of the left side this is an this is anterior this is posterior this is superior this is inferior this portion is the mentum chin now you see nicely this is anterior belly of digastric of the left side this is anterior belly of the digastric right side here it is the body of the higher bone this portion this this triangle is forming the submental triangle submental triangle mylohyoid muscle is visible mylohyoid muscle is visible this midline raphe it is forming so this is the submental triangle this this information uh, uh, we can nicely see from the because all these structures we need to identify in the cadaver but uh, for for now we just can appreciate this structure from a nicely dissected body from the photographs of nicely dissected body we can see the facial artery its tortuosity and we can study this thing from uh, different atlases from our textbooks so again almost same view so i'll suggest you to go with the textbook and um, uh, follow your uh, theory questions study well with your atlases and uh, we are hoping that we will be showing these structures in the cadaver so after we resume our classes anti-triangle is very important for examination for window and id uh, topic and uh, it is very important for your clinical knowledge also so hope you are doing well Students of North Bengal Medical College, uh, I hope you are missing your campus. So these are the recent pictures of campus. It's lush green and we are waiting you to come back here again. And we are hoping and looking forward for the classes to resume. Thank you. Thank you very much.